Hello there and welcome to Great Circle Distance. What is Great Circle Distance and how does it matter? Okay, suppose you are in a city and you pull out your map and you want to go in that city from point A to point B and you take this road south and then take this road east and then you arrive at your destination and your total distance traveled is the length of that road plus the length of that road if there is a road that goes straight from A to B you simply travel that distance if however if you're traveling in an aircraft or rarely these days on board a ship and if you're going from one point or one city of the earth to another city of the earth say from Toronto to Johannesburg and if you're traveling along a straight line that straight line basically will be a straight line on the spherical surface of the earth if you were to take a world map and locate Toronto and Johannesburg and draw a straight line between the two cities this distance will not be equal to this distance that's because a straight line on a sphere is actually part of a great circle a great circle basically is that circle whose plane travels through the center of the earth or passes through the center of the earth and all distances calculated on the surface of the earth are basically spherical uh, or great circle distances and this is why it's important because the error between this map quote-unquote map distance and great circle distance can sometimes be large enough as you'll see to warrant a better and more accurate uh, distance mapping. Especially important for aircraft as you don't want to miscalculate how far you're going to travel because of fuel and weight considerations. So what is or how do we calculate great circle distance? Suppose that I'm talking about the same two cities again uh, that's Toronto right there and Johannesburg in South Africa. Toronto's coordinates are 43 degrees 40 minutes north which if we can write also as plus 43.677 degrees and 79 degrees 37 minutes west which we can write as minus or negative 79.630 degrees Johannesburg on the other hand is located at 26 degrees 26 degrees sorry and 8 minutes south which we can write as negative 26.133 degrees and it is at 28 degrees 14 minutes east which we can write as plus 28.242 degrees I'll rewrite that here Now, how do we calculate the distance, the great circle distance between Toronto and Johannesburg? There are two methods, one not very accurate for long distances and one quite accurate for long distances. Neither of which is extremely accu accurate to the accuracy that a GPS would normally give you. And the reason is that the Earth is not a perfect sphere. A perfect sphere has the same radius at from the center of that sphere to every single point on the surface of that sphere. Because the Earth is geographically varied and because it is spinning on its axis, the Earth is actually an oblate sphere, meaning it is flattened a bit at the equator than at the poles. So the radius at the equator is slightly longer than the radius of the poles. However, for our purposes, we are going to use the mean radius of the Earth. So for the radius of the Earth, we are going to use the value of 6,371 kilometers. And that's how we will go forward. So the first, uh, the first method is called the northing and easting method. Northing and easting method. What we do is we simply calculate. So I'm actually going to superimpose or draw on this a sphere representing the earth and here's the prime meridian and here's the equator and here's the center of the earth 
and there's Toronto and there's Johannesburg what we can do is I'm actually going to draw a line from the center of the earth to both Toronto and Johannesburg now I know that Toronto is so far north from Johannesburg the the difference between the latitudes of Toronto and Johannesburg is those many degrees when subtended at the center of the earth and I also know that Johannesburg is so f so much further east uh, than Toronto is, uh, from Toronto so the longitude difference it would be that angle subtended at the center and the northing and easting method relies on the fact that once we calculate this angle and this angle we can simply use the Pythagorean theorem because we will have calculated this the north uh, south distance and the north and the east west distance and then this the great circle distance will be uh, using the Pythagorean theorem and as you can see as we, you will see this is not going to be very accurate because you cannot flatten a sphere on a map without some distortion but let's continue anyway with the northing and easting method so here we have the D N S or the uh, difference uh, first of all actually the difference between the north south latitudes is 69.81 degrees and the difference between the east and west longitudes is 107.872 degrees so the north south distance is going to be 2 pi times the radius of the earth times uh, the delta north south all divided by 360 degrees and if you go through the calculation you will get D and S as 7762.517 kilometers and it's the same calculation for east west except for instead of delta NS you would input delta east west and if you were to do that calculation you would get uh, the D E W or the delta east west would be 11,994.819 kilometers and now again if we consider the Pythagorean triangle we have DNS as this distance and DEW as this distance and we will calculate this using the Pythagorean theorem this distance D and this is going to be equal to the under root of DNS squared plus D E W squared and if you go through that calculation the distance will come out to 14,287.489 kilometers now the real great circle distance between Toronto and Johannesburg is actually 13,363 kilometers so here we have a delta in percentage we are off by about 6.91 almost 7 percent which is a large value as you can see we are off by more than a thousand kilometers almost 1100 kilometers or so this is why the northing and easting method while fairly accurate for small distances over thousands of kilometers the difference can really grow large Another method, which is more accurate than the northing and, north and easting method, is the central subtended angle method. Let me write that down. Uh, number two, the second method is the central subtended angle method. And this is what it is. Here we have that sphere again, the Earth the prime meridian and the equator the center of the earth the Toronto and there is Johannesburg and again I'm going to draw the two lines connecting the center of the earth with Toronto and Johannesburg and we want to find out this distance the great circle distance instead of calculating the northing and the easting difference in degrees we're going to simply find out the, the angle here the central subtended angle the angle which is subtended at the center of the earth by the two lines connecting the two cities with the center of the earth let's call that angle alpha and alpha is given by a very complex formula that I'm not going to show you how to derive here because it will take me another lecture 
but the formula, and you can trust me on this one, alpha is equal to the inverse cosine of sine phi 1 times sine phi 2 plus cosine phi 1 multiplied by cosine phi 2 multiplied by the cosine of the delta lambda. Now what are all these phi's and lambdas? Phi, if I can go back one more, phi is the latitude and lambda is the longitude. Same thing with Johannesburg that's phi, actually this would be phi 1 and lambda 1 and phi 2 and lambda 2 would be that. So what would the central subtenant angle equation turn out to be? Bear with me here as I'm going to write this down for your convenience. It will be much simpler if you write down every step of the way otherwise you might end up confusing yourself. So phi 1 is 43.677 degrees and then sine phi 2 is negative 26.133 degrees. It is important to keep the signs otherwise the sine and cosine will come out to be the wrong sine itself. Multiplied by cosine of 43.677 degrees multiplied by cosine of negative 26.133 degrees multiplied by the cosine of the delta lambda the difference in the longitude which we calculated there, the east-west longitudinal difference which is 107.872 degrees and if you perform the calculation alpha will come out to be 120.228 degrees which is now easy to calculate the great circle distance from. The great circle distance again will be 2 pi radius of the earth multiplied by alpha divided by 360 degrees and if you were to perform this calculation you will get d here using this method as 13,368.752 kilometers. It is very close to the real value which is 13,363 kilometers. In fact so close that our delta difference which if you remember back here was almost 7 percent. Here the delta difference if you calculate that is going to be only 0.043 percent so it's not even half a percent it's less than a half percent so as you can see there are two methods one the northing and easting and two the central subtended angle method and so the central subtended angle method because it does not assume or does not flatten this triangle here this triangle here it simply calculates that central angle right there it is a much more accurate method of calculating great circle distances in short, this is how you calculate great circle distances. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. There will be more coming up. Thank you.